All right, so let's keep on going unless there, you know, if there are any questions, just interrupt. Okay, so now you're looking at this uh, func uh, this integral, this antiderivative of x times x squared minus 7 to the negative 1 half. Now, this is actually slightly different from the previous two examples. So I'm actually going to give you, I'm going to give you about five minutes to work on this on your own. And maybe in those five minutes, you'll actually discover how this is a little bit different from the previous two. So think about what you should make you, make your translation table, and then translate the integral. Try to do as much of that as you can.
Okay, so let's look at uh, what everyone got. So, does someone have an idea of what you want to make you for this? What did you think about in those five minutes? X squared minus seven. So that's actually correct. So then we're going to make a translation table. Now, can someone say, so either um, if you got this as your U, U equals X squared minus seven, or even if you didn't get it as your U, can you say, how is this different from the previous two examples? There's a slight difference, right? Why did I choose u equals x cubed in the last example? Let's just look back at that. I chose u equals x cubed because the derivative of x cubed was sitting outside. What is different about the current problem? Does that rule of thumb hold true for this problem? Is the derivative of u sitting outside multiplying the whole thing? So Noam says, no, right? Obviously, the derivative of x squared minus 7 is 2x, and that is not sitting outside. But Noam says, no, but the one half that comes down makes up for that. What do you mean by the one half that comes down? So this one half is actually, I could have made actually any exponent here. This could have been, say, 3 over 7. That exponent is actually not going to matter. What really matters is that, that even though the derivative of x squared minus 7 is not sitting outside, what is sitting outside? If only I had a 2, right? But we know that constant multiples don't really affect integrals or derivatives, right? Those constant multiples just come along for the ride. So the fact that the derivative of my u, some multiple is sitting outside, that is actually OK. In fact, that is going to be our new rule of thumb. So choose u so that any, I should really say some, but some constant multiple of its derivative is outside as a multiplicative factor. Again, so this function, x squared minus 7, does fulfill this new rule of thumb, right? The derivative of x squared minus 7 is 2x. And you have to ask yourself, is some multiple of 2x sitting outside as a, as a derivative? Yes, x is a multiple of 2x, right? It's, a, it's 1 half is the multiple. Okay, so now let's do our translation table. So I start with my function u. I take my derivative. And then I solve for dx. And then I translate the integral. OK, so as usual, part of this I leave alone. Right, The x, I really don't know what to do with. So I'm just going to leave it alone, keep it in x. The x squared minus 7, aha, that's actually really easy because that is just our u, right? x squared minus 7 to the negative 1 half, that is just our u here. So that will just be u to the negative 1 half. And then our dx, we have that in our uh, translation table, right? That's du over 2x. Just rewriting this neatly. 
what do we notice? Now we notice that the X's actually do cancel out, right? And what are we left with after those X's cancel out? Well, we still have that two in the denominator. So we actually have a constant multiple of one half times u to the negative one half du. And you see that that constant multiple is not really a big deal, right? Constant multiples can come along for the ride. It doesn't matter, right? So when I take the antiderivative of this, what do I get? The one half comes along for the ride. And then the antiderivative of u to the negative one half is u to the one half over one half, right? That's just normal power rule. And then plus c. Now, in this case, the twos actually do end up canceling, but you can see that this exponent, the negative one half, it could have been any exponent. We would have essentially done the same thing. And I'm left with u to the one half plus c. And then I can put back what u is in terms of x. Okay, questions about that? Okay, so this is going to be our new uh, rule of thumb from now on, right? I choose u so that it's an inside function and some multiple of its derivative is outside. I, and it has to be a constant multiple, right? Not just you know any con you know, any multiple. All right, so